right now. Is the next season of your life. With Jesus' joy, can we rise up on our feet and welcome this amazing gift to the body of Christ? Apostle Joshua Selma! Come on, celebrate Jesus! opportunity. I just want to say a word or two concerning the teaching of Pastor Jeff. Please go back and listen to what he said again. Hallelujah. I want you to go back and take the time. Listen to what he's taught. Everything even before I arrived. Listen to it again. And then connect to what he shared yesterday. It's a very profound truth. He brought understanding and clarity to this subject of giving. It's very, very important. Hallelujah. It's my considered opinion that I think there are about two or three issues as far as giving is concerned with the body of Christ. Number one, he brought it accurately. He said, a swing to one side. And so the, um, the other sides that make the equation complete were ignored, either as a result of ignorance or just being victims of self. Hallelujah. So there's need to bring the other aspects that make the whole equation of wealth and abundance complete. And then number two, the motif of the heart. The motif of the heart. It is true. I hope you know that the prodigal son started with prosperity. He didn't start with poverty. So it was the prodigal son was not looking for money. He already had what many people were looking for. But something about the state of his heart depleted him until he got back again. And pastor shared something very touching uh, about an agenda from hell to cripple the church. It's not a lie. Oh. It's true. Believe it. It's not a lie. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. There is only one reason. Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Jacob was a prophet, but he was hungry. And he became ineffective. He said, I have learned that there is corn in Egypt. Corn is good, but the location is where the problem is. But being that there's no other place that has corn. He says, why do we look at one another? Verse 2. He says, get it down there and buy for us so that we may live and not die. Even a prophet without corn will die. That's how the nation of Israel got to Egypt until they became slaves. Every time Satan sees the liberty of the saints, he will manipulate the economy so that corn is always found and only found in Egypt. And even if you are the son of a prophet, hunger, not an attack, not a deception, hunger can take you willingly to Egypt until you become a slave. And so I'm praying that God will help us to really understand this. Make up your mind as a goal to not be poor. Honestly, pastor said it right. Uh, money is not everything, but many things depend on money. And it is foolish to ignore it. You will pay a price, a very bitter price. If God helps you to solve this money problem once and for all, I tell you, over 70% of your life will be efficient. Money protects integrity. Money protects character. 
Are we together? Your integrity is protected when you have resources. The Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender. You see that now? It's true. The rich will always rule over the poor. And then, of course, like he said, if you are a poor wise man, your voice will not be heard. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we thank God for this word. Go and listen to it because I submit to you, Pastor, the challenge of most believers is financial. You can cast a demon with one prophetic word. Go. Jesus said, go and a legion left. But this issue of finance, you see, do you know that Gadara was not angry that the demons left? They were angry that they lost money. That was why they drove Jesus back. You do your deliverance provided it does not touch money issues. As soon as the swine fell and it affected them, they said, no, you have to go out of here. Satan has an intentional agenda to cripple the work of God. And that happens through finances. And whilst there are all kinds of wrong teachings, unfortunately, founded on greed, this is where the problem is, founded on greed, because of hunger, lack of consecration, People are now manipulated into all kinds of things. Very ugly sight. I know God is cleaning up his body. But if we make a mistake and throw away the revelation of giving, giving does not only bring finances. It truly is how people live. The plants and the animals, the ecosystem should teach us that this is how it works. So by the time you do not have the mentality of a giver, even if Satan does not exist, he will still fail. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Pastor, thank you for bringing that great word. Let's honor the man of God again. In Jesus' name. Um, I want us to pray. Do you like prayer? Please like it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because today, by the message of God, we'll take the time. I want to show you one key through prayer. And then it will be a prophetic meeting. A very brief one at that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, please be seated. Please be seated. Yesterday, we considered a few things. Number one, how that being born of God has brought us to a life of glory and grace and honor and greatness. You still remember that? And we agreed that everyone born of God has been born into a family of royalty, of grace, of glory, and of greatness. Number two, we said that the quality of your life and the extent of your impact depends on you and God, but that God's part has already been fulfilled in Christ. And so what is left now is your own commitment towards your success, towards your destiny. And I gave us three keys yesterday. Number one, I said you must have an encounter with God. If you desire to arise, you desire to build, you desire to advance in life and destiny, you must have an encounter with God. That destiny actualization depends on the confidence that is derived from his presence. Number two, we said that you need to invest in building a correct perception. No matter how well intentioned you are, if your mentality, if your mindset is wrong, you will limit God. You will limit your destiny. Are we together now? There were 12 spies that were sent to go and spy the land. 10 came back with what the Bible calls an evil report. To them, it was an honest, realistic assessment of the situation. But God's interpretation was that it was an evil report. And Caleb said, no, don't bring that story. Let us go up at once. He challenged them otherwise. Hallelujah. So you must invest in building a correct perception. It says, what seest thou? The rod of an almond tree. Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 and 12. He said, you have seen correctly. He says, for I will watch over my word to perform it. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. My word that you have seen. And then number three, we spoke about courage. That it takes audacity and it takes courage to force your portion in life and destiny to come to you. I hope you still remember. It takes courage to do anything. It takes courage to dare destiny until you win. 
it takes courage to build anything spiritually physically it takes courage and um we'll take part two arise and build this will be um a prophetic time we'll just pray and then trust god to really minister to us in the name of jesus so i'll give you three more keys in addition to yesterday's um just to add to this whilst we pray that would be key number four here in part two and the fourth key that i want to give you that is responsible for arising is wisdom the key of wisdom proverbs chapter 24 please from verse 3 and 4 proverbs 24 if we can have it in amplified uh that would be a great blessing if otherwise that's fine proverbs chapter 24 3 and 4 it says through wisdom is an house builded and by understanding it is established verse 4 it says through knowledge let me just quote it quickly for time the rooms are filled with every precious and pleasant riches through wisdom amplified says a life a home you know a destiny through wisdom it is impossible to arise in life and to live out your destiny isolating the subject of wisdom wisdom is the principal thing the bible says therefore get wisdom wisdom is the principal thing you cannot be a leader without wisdom you cannot be a man of god without wisdom you cannot be an entrepreneur without wisdom you cannot build finances without wisdom wisdom is responsible for mighty works wisdom is responsible for excellence everywhere you see excellence it would have come as a fruit of wisdom are we together now the bible says wisdom speaks of excellent things everywhere you see the spirit of excellence wisdom is at work there what is wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of the truths you understand so that they deliver the accurate application of the truths that you understand not the truths you know not the truths you have learned it is knowledge then understanding a comprehension of the working dynamics of that knowledge and then wisdom is the fortitude to engage so that it delivers there are many people who know what should lift them but they are not yet lifted because wisdom is not yet at work they are not in ignorance just because knowledge has arrived does not mean results will come it is knowledge a an intelligent coalition of truth then understanding the comprehension of the working dynamics of those truths then wisdom the grace to engage that which you have now understood it is at the point of engaging it that god is committed to making it work in your life are we together there are many believers for instance who know that giving plays a role in your prosperity in the kingdom but very few have obtained grace to practice it or others have practiced it grudgingly without understanding there are people who know that a diligent hand will make fat are we together but very few people are actively diligent wisdom he says now that ye know these things happy or blessed are you if you do them i do not know anyone who has built an enviable destiny without contending for wisdom the bible says does not wisdom cry that she cries that those who are simple in heart should come to her by me kings reign wisdom is speaking and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early will find me there is timing to wisdom how do you know that your life does not have wisdom by your results and the quality of your decisions the clearest proof of wisdom in your life is the superiority of your decisions if your choices and your decisions are self-sabotaging it may not always be an attack it is the bankruptcy of wisdom who is learning most people do not have wisdom they have ideas they have sincere hearts they even have character but you know wisdom is displayed in the quality of your decisions 
your choices and your decisions reveal whether wisdom is at work in your life or not so they bring a woman to jesus who was caught in adultery the bible says in the very act the goal was not the woman she was used as a trap to put him down and they said this woman was caught in adultery in the very act you claim you're a prophet sent from god tell us what to do about her situation if he says no leave the woman they say you see this man is not a preacher of righteousness and if he now negates what the prophets they say, you cannot be a true prophet because a true prophet will agree with what god has done with other prophets and the bible says jesus kept quiet silence is wisdom there are times that the answer is silence if you keep quiet you have already answered are we together now and he wrote on the ground exhausted their patience and then lifted up his eyes and said he who is without sin should cast the first stone and the bible says with one sentence they were pricked from the oldest because the longer you live the more you need mercy from the oldest to the youngest and they all left the woman there he said woman where are thine accusers he says neither do i condemn you go and see no more wisdom 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 do you know that decisions decide destiny decisions not intentions decisions you are here this morning because you made a choice to be here am i right on that there were many other places you would have been this morning this is a saturday morning or afternoon now and you decided to place all of them side by side and using whatever parameter you chose to be in church a sacrifice but a noble one are we together now your destiny tomorrow will be a summation of all these kinds of decisions to love Jesus and to be serious with him is a decision to live a life of integrity and character is a decision am I right on that to live a, a responsible life is a decision most people do not know that God gave man the power to choose from the day God gave man that ability um, it is very powerful because no matter what you lose there is one thing you can never lose your power to choose your power to decide you can make up your mind to be serious the prodigal son lost money the prodigal son lost a place in his father's house but one thing that he had was the power to decide and he said i will arise he was not advised by the holy ghost by himself as an act of his will he said i will arise it is still within my power to decide to arise you may not have the power to arise, but you can choose to arise. Are we together now? Everybody say wisdom. When you come to church like this, among the many things that you hear from your pastor are keys that prime you. He does not make the choices for you. He equips you with the tools that help you to make superior decisions. Are we together? The goal, the intent of every sermon, every seminar, every conference is that by God's grace, you are equipped with sufficient knowledge. But the final decision will be your responsibility. You can decide to waste away these days of encounter in the presence of God or to go back with a renewed heart being equipped now you understand the consequences that follow every decision so you can now make noble decisions decisions that are pro spirituality decisions that are pro transformation decisions that are pro wealth and abundance are we together decisions that are pro leadership most people do not know that if you lack wisdom in your life one of the fruits of wisdom is stagnancy because all the fruits of, of um, foolishness is stagnancy you will remain at the same level wisdom creates transition it forbids that you remain at the same position indefinitely it moves you from one level of success to the other you want to actualize destiny you want to arise you must cry for wisdom the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. The ultimate custodian of wisdom is God. Some of you need to pray. And when we get to the session of prayer, please pray. I am tired of making foolish decisions. I made 11 decisions this year. 10 of them took me backward. It means you need wisdom. You don't have to be wicked. You don't have to be evil. Once you do not have sufficient knowledge, you do not have understanding, 
and then you lack wisdom your life is already pegged indefinitely but i pray for you in the name that is above all names where you have made decisions that are self-sabotaging where you have made decisions that have taken you 10 years backwards in the name of jesus christ may you begin to make quality decisions that will quantum leap your destiny shout a believers amen wisdom it is wisdom to make the choice to seek his face every day it is wisdom to make the choice to select and edit the kinds of relationships that you have around your life are we together now i'm sure some of you may have heard me say that if you are around five foolish people you did not count well there are six foolish people there and if you are around five wise people you didn't count well there are six wise people there you will always be a reflection of the company you have decided by your choices to allow a space into your life the bible says he that works with the wise will be wise himself but it says a companion of fools shall be destroyed when the devil wants to destroy you he does not bring evil he keeps you where evil is happening and when you keep gazing at it sufficiently like lot all you need to do is to settle near sodom eventually you will find yourself in sodom are we learning now praise the name of the lord wisdom behind mighty works is wisdom behind exploits in ministry wisdom behind a thriving business wisdom are we together behind an exceptional family wisdom it's important you cannot brush through the subject of arising building thriving excelling and ignore wisdom no matter what key you omit wisdom should not be one of it do you believe what you're hearing this morning for some of you you are at the edge of a new season you are wrapping up your yesterday and stepping into tomorrow what you need is greater wisdom greater wisdom greater wisdom if you seek wisdom with passion you will be amazed you will make decisions that will quantum leap your destiny for instance did you know that the decision alone to select quality godly friends with character integrity if that is the only decision you make per year you have already scheduled yourself for a great life the decision to say no to destiny destroyers the decision to say no the decision to shun dishonor is a decision that will quantum leap your life because there is only one reason why people fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles so the decision to embrace honor as a lifestyle to god to his ways and to men alone can take you places not knowing so much but that all you know is honor it will open doors of businesses for you it will open doors of contracts for you it will endear you to the heart of people and endear them to you who is learning this morning the decision to create a prayer schedule that no matter what happens i create a prayer schedule intentionally i make my prayer life constructive that is wisdom the decision to go for a retreat periodically to assess my life to assess my growth to appraise myself unemotionally and come up with decisions that move me forward wisdom many people have not embraced wisdom they are not even aware of the consequences of foolishness they allow their lives to just you imagine someone driving down a ditch and he just said the car and he's firing he's not holding you know the steering and he hopes you will arrive well wisdom is like holding the steering of your destiny and navigating it properly the only way you drive well even if it is a self-driving car you have to initiate the process are we together when you see how pilots fly at a point in the flight they don't do anything again they could leave the cockpit and walk around just with people and sometimes even fall asleep because the initial process they have set it on a course that will guarantee that it arrives well but there are times of turbulence once there is turbulence and you know the the weather condition is turbulent the pilot will have to settle down and wake up because he knows that these are moments where he has to be sensitive people could die if he's careless you are at a sensitive period in your life before you take action make sure you take it with light 
knowledge. Don't take rash and careless action. Do you know that it is wisdom to be patient until you are guided by sufficient knowledge? So when people put pressure on you and say, can you decide this? You don't make destiny defining decisions in a hurry. You should not be slow in deciding. But if your purpose for marking time is to get sufficient knowledge, you are wise. It is cheaper bargain than recycling your pain again because of lack of knowledge. Are we together? There are some of you who just joined a club. You didn't even know what you joined. It was when they sent you the bill for subscription. You said, oh, you didn't tell me. Why didn't you take the time to find out? People think things without thinking. Can you sign this sign here your signature here and then eventually you find out that you signed that all your pension half of it should go to them i say you didn't tell me wisdom wisdom can deliver people from trouble who is learning this morning pray in one minute whilst you are seated and say father in the name of jesus let your grace let wisdom rest upon my life let wisdom rest upon my life i'm tired of making foolish decisions someone is praying sincerely wisdom some of you have made very bad financial decisions bad business decisions because of lack of wisdom you are asking god for mercy now in jesus name we pray amen in jesus name we pray how do you get wisdom? One, by meditation. Two, by study of scripture. Three, by studying the materials of those who are carriers of wisdom. One, meditation. In the place of meditation, you give the Holy Spirit room to pour in ideas, destiny advancing ideas. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 1, it says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Number two, the study of scripture. The Bible is called the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. When you take the time to learn the ways of God, you make decisions that are consistent with scripture. Number three, when you study the materials of people who are carriers of wisdom, the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. If you are struggling financially, for instance, you find the materials of people who have a proven track record to have risen financially with the dignity of integrity and you will find keys there you will see what you are missing because you are studying it prayerfully the holy ghost will open your eyes to see ah this is where i'm missing it all boils down to choices and decisions the purpose of knowledge is to equip you so that you make the kinds of choices that move you forward May you go forward by making right choices. Say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next that I will teach you very quickly is strategic, consistent prayers. We are talking about keys now. We spoke about an encounter with God. Hallelujah. We spoke about contending for a superior mindset, paying the price to invest, to have a correct perception. We spoke about courage. Now I've told you about wisdom. Next is that you must design a strategic, consistent prayer life. You want to arise? It is at the mercy of your prayer life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a few things about prayer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men, men, men ought always to pray and not to faint. I have studied the subject of prayer by the grace of God and I will tell you the very foundation for prayer is hinged on how God created man. Animals don't pray as much as we know. We've never met fishes and insects and other reptiles in a prayer seminar. Um, they don't pray as much as we know. We know that they praise God. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So they have their way of praising the Lord. But there is something unique about man as the zenith of God's creation and prayer. I will tell you this. Among other reasons, the reason why God mandates that all men pray is that he made man in his own image and after his likeness. And he gave man this thing called the will. This will is a very mysterious composition in man. 
from the time God gave you the will, the power to make quality strategic choices. Are we together? It became scripturally incorrect for God to impose anything upon your life. So every time you submit yourself to prayer, among the many things you are doing is that you are making your own choices and you are giving God a chance to respond to you according to your use of the will. If you do not pray, your prayerlessness is an instruction to creation that anything it brings on your life is okay. Are we together now? Every time you submit yourself to prayer, what you are doing is that you are participating in the making of your destiny. You are using your will. Are we together now? If you do not pray, you are saying whatever comes your way, good or bad, it is acceptable. You agree with it. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You must pray. Now, with respect to destiny actualization, prayer achieves two things. Number one, prayer activates the ministry of angels. Listen carefully. You want to pray the kind of prayer that causes you to rise and to make progress in life and destiny it is important that you know what it achieves number one it activates the ministry of angels acts chapter 12 the bible tells us that peter was bound hand and feet waiting to be offered after the passover when herod beheaded james he saw that it pleased the jews he now caught peter are we together and that he was waiting that after the passover he will hand peter the bible says but prayer was made verse 4 and 5 but prayer was made by the church unto god for him but prayer was made unto god by the church for him and then the bible says verse 6 that that same night while they were preparing peter the bible says um an angel verse 7 now give us verse 7 please verse 7 thank you behold an angel of the lord came are you seeing that now but the angels were activated to function because of the prayer of the saints while the saints were praying and making intercession the bible says an angel of the lord came watch this and a light shined in the prison and he smote peter by the side and said unto him arise up quickly your speed in arising is engendered by angelic presence you can be made to arise quickly financially to arise quickly in life and destiny when angels as, are, assist you you don't only arise you arise quickly there is speed when we pray are we learning now the angel tapped him and said arise quickly and immediately his chains fell off let's go to verse 11 quickly for sake of time by the time we get to verse 11 peter had now been rescued he said of a truth i know that of a truth verse 11 same acts chapter 12 verse 11 acts chapter 12 and verse 11 he says when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a surety that the lord had sent his angels and delivered me out of the hand of herod i like this and delivered me from the expectation of the people god does not just deliver men from trouble he also delivers men from negative expectations are we together now and he did that by his angel most believers have not been taught the ministry of angels we know instinctively that angels are there whatever they are doing they are shy around but let me tell you the truth angels don't just freelance themselves they are directed by the holy ghost and that happens through the prayers of the saints i hope you know that the same angels that saved peter were available to save james but because the church did not pray james was beheaded when it was time for peter to be beheaded the church said enough is enough we may not have the power to meet herod but we can pray it is amazing how many things how many troubles would have been delivered from if only we submitted ourselves to prayer do you understand that now yes you must give yourself continually to prayer and that prayer activates the ministry of angels those you call destiny helpers they don't just come oh, some of them are led by angelic presence 
angels help to they are like movie directors they work in partnership with the holy ghost to schedule seasons schedule favor when a season is coming to an end you go to the right place that nudging within you and you meet the right person who becomes an usher to take you to the next season there are people like that they are never scarce of help someone who has no business coming around their vicinity because there is a destiny connection the person will make a u-turn without plan angelic presence you find out that their life is always from glory to glory by all means if that man is supposed to meet brother a and for some reason he does not meet the brother a he will suddenly have a nudging to fly to europe for two days outside of his schedule and boom he enters the plane and guess who he's sitting close to the person who would define the next 10 years of his life and for six seven hours they're having a meaningful destiny advancing conversation oh do you know we're just looking for someone right now we're bringing a product to africa and you are an answered prayer you say really and the lord tells you this is why you are going to europe it's not to rest it's not for any burial i just disguised it by the ministry of angels if god were to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit and to see that the things you call coincidences are only coincidences based on your interpretation there are no mistakes in the spirit the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Angels. Paul said, I mean, Peter said, I know for a shorty that God has sent his angel. Sent his angel. Some of you need to enjoy the ministry of angels because there is no human way you can meet your destiny helpers. And do you know, if you're not guided by angelic assistance, you can pass the helper of your destiny every day and not even know. Hallelujah. One of my dear people showed me a very interesting photo. So many years ago, he was taking testimonies and his wife came, his now wife, came to share the testimony and he was holding the mic for her. And while she was testifying, he was just doing his thing. So now later on, I don't know who fished out that photo and showed them and said, can you imagine what was going on here? His wife now, she came and was testifying on the altar. And the man was just doing his job, taking testimonies. Not knowing that the person who was testing, if God does not open your eyes, bar, you can be around your Goshen and still leave it to go and look for Goshen somewhere else. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever has blinded you to the factors that make your next level by angelic assistance, even in the place of prayer, I'm speaking to you prophetically. May my God open your eyes to see. May my God open your eyes to see. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe in the ministry of angels. I have encountered the ministry of angels practically countless times in my life. Hallelujah. Not just because God has granted me the grace to see them. You don't have to see angels to believe that they walk. The proof of their presence is always there. Mysterious connections, angels. Mysterious connections. Hallelujah. I have met people in my life today who accelerated my life, my destiny and ministry by a factor that only God would tell. And looking from hindsight, I ask myself, what would have happened if I did not meet this man? And do you know, some of those meetings are a Kairos moment that if you miss it, it will not have come again. Because some of the people I encountered that were used by God, some of them have passed on to glory. Some of these people who prayed and imparted grace, they passed on to glory. So if you did not encounter certain seasons, that would have been the end of your life. For someone, God can be prompting you to go somewhere. I'm, I'm sure that maybe the, the old man, who knows, who prayed for us, imparting the grace for long life. Somewhere after a luring going to equity, I'm sure that man has gone to be with the Lord. It was by the strong nudging, who knows, angelic presence. I went to preach at um, a university called Afe Babalola University that year. And I saw people living long. We flew to Ilorin and continued the journey by road. And we passed a very mysterious village where there were people who lived very long. They are carriers of graces. And when we returned, I said, please, they should lead us to the oldest man in that village. I just want to sow a seed into his life 
and to honor him and let him speak over our lives we are young ministers then they lead us to this man he was not even speaking english and we had someone who was interpreting and the man prayed prayed seriously from his heart then there was someone who had died at 136 he died serving god the, the obituary was there and they now showed me the person's wife she was still alive i said let's go back the man may have died but since the wife is alive two have become one we asked that mother to pray for us again and the woman took off her shoes and placed her feet on the ground you see that that woman sang all kinds of songs and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed not every season listen carefully not every season comes repeatedly there are some seasons that come only once in a man's lifetime and if you are not assisted by angels in the place of prayer to build your discernment to know how to maximize kairos moments you can miss out on an opportunity that will take the mercy of god for you to receive the benefits from it again i'm praying for you that where you have not enjoyed the ministry of angels in life and in ministry from today not tomorrow from today i pray for you from my heart it will be clear from your life that you are not alone it will be clear from your life that you are enjoying angelic assistance in the name of jesus christ please sit down are you getting blessed my most dramatic encounter with angels the most dramatic encounter that I remember many years ago I was in Zaria then I came to Abuja here the place you call Mararaba we're going somewhere and my phone my phone fell or whatever happened I could not get the phone again I was so sad and the dear friend that we were together with he had to get a bike and was trying to pursue the boss that had dropped us this was many many years ago and he said he will go and ask and if he doesn't find i think there's a way they complain maybe their association and they will look out for it that he ran to pursue them and i stood there was just praying in tongues i said god i can't lose my phone i don't have time for all of this there are so many things the purpose for which i came here everything is in my phone and god is my witness i lie not a gentleman walks up to me he doesn't ask me is this your phone he just taps me and passes my phone to me i collect that phone and he leaves and i never saw him again we're having a crusade the very first crusade we're going to have someone just came to me and tapped me he said get a megaphone and a bus go around the city and do publicity and he left i looked for him to say thank you nobody could identify him angels are real low if you are not spiritual enough to see them doesn't mean they are not real pay the price in the place of prayer activate the ministry of angels was it not an angel that quickly came and spoke to joseph and said run run with jesus jesus could die oh he would have died as a baby i don't know what would have happened to us but for angels i'm praying for you quarter to trouble may god cause angels to appear and and take you away from bad financial investments are we together yes angels when herod died it was still angels that came and told mary and joseph he said now they that seek the life of the child are gone imagine that jesus himself needed angelic assistance when he was born they were angels after he was done praying and fasting the bible says the angels came and ministered to him when he was going to heaven levitating back to heaven in acts chapter one they were angels the only place there were no angels was the cross and that was because he was and going through an exchange there at every part of jesus's life they were angels the bible says it was an angel that came to steer the water in bethesda and whoever jumped in there first was healed of whatever infirmity one last time i'm praying for you the angels that have been assigned to ensure that 2024 becomes a manifestation of prophecy in your life i decree and declare they are activated to function over your life Amen. they are activated to function over your finances Amen. over your destiny Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. in the name of jesus in the name of jesus it was charles and francis hunter of blessed memory please sit down who said that one time 
they were i think taking a flight going somewhere and there was turbulence it looked like they were going to lose the plane was going to crash and everybody was shouting the name of what they believed and i think it was francis who said she looked through the window of the aircraft and all of a sudden she saw two angels just holding the plane and in a shocking way everything just stabilized and the pilot was able to navigate his way even though it was an emergency landing but at least they landed without dying many things happen in our lives you see i have i have spoken with people who had accidents and some of them would tell you that the steering locked i did everything i could do it was a demonic thing i pressed the brake and it was not working i was watching myself die it was just for the, the ministry of angels some of them will tell you all of a sudden they saw angelic appearances and it minimized the damage or even avoided it completely angels are real they came to save peter else peter would have died something would have happened to the church he sent his angel was it not paul who said an angel has appeared before me and he said there shall be no loss he said all of you find courage we will lose our goods but we will not lose our lives an angel of the lord was sent and he appeared before me and the bible says that boat was rocked even though it did not they didn't perish and they arrived as an island called melita angelic assistance number two what do we enjoy when we pray with respect to destiny actualization the ministry of helpers verse 13 same acts chapter 12 let's read verse 13 to 17 let's hurry up so we can pray verse 13 to 17 watch this now so the angels were done with their own assignment but paul was still not entirely i mean peter was still not entirely free we're reading verse 13 acts chapter 12 media verse 13 thank you the bible says peter finally arrives where they were praying oh so that at least he can rest and refresh the bible says peter knocked at the door of the gate and a damn cell called rhoda hearkened to him <laughs> next verse 14 reading down to 17 the bible says when she knew peter's voice she opened not the gate for gladness and ran in and told how that peter was at the gate peter said i'm tired i've been in prison open this door for me let me rest the, the Bible says the lady was excited. She left him outside there. Angels can help you, but you also need the ministry of men. Are we together now? Peter was exhausted. The place of rest was the house, and yet the door was shut. And they told the lady, you are mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was so. And they said, it is his angel. Verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. I like this. Peter continued knocking. And one of the ways you keep knocking is in the place of prayer. The Bible says, Matthew 7, 7, don't turn there. It said, ask and you shall receive. Knock, seek and you shall find. Then it says, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amplified says, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. Knock and, it, and keep knocking. Verse 8 says, for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened paul would have gone back there what good would it have done that he left the prison but could not find a place to rest re-strategize and continue his life the bible says but peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door they saw him there and were astonished verse 17 the bible says 17 and but he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace can you imagine how tired he was he couldn't he didn't even have time to talk he had to use his hand to say look just keep quiet he declared to them how the lord had brought him out of the prison and said go show these things unto james and to the brethren and he departed there to another place from there he rest and he was ready to go to the next season i pray for you the human vessels who must show up in this season some of them will come as financiers some of them will come as men of influence some of them will come as endorsers i pray for you from the depth of my heart may you find them in this season for someone may you find them this month not november not december this month in the name of jesus christ please be seated please be seated the world of men functions by the endorsement of men. 
It's true. I know people today who are in business not necessarily because of their level of competence. You get to a point in your life where everybody around, including your competitors, are equally competent. At that point, your edge is the ministry of men, the ministry of helpers. Hallelujah. God will never give a vision without orchestrating men who will stand with you. Stand with you. We excel in life, in destiny, in ministry, based on the kind and the quality of helpers that show up. One genuine helper sent by God can hold your hands. I was watching the video by your pastor, the aide. You hear what the woman said, the proprietor, or I think the director of the school. She said, you people had been helping, you'd been doing a lot of things. Now you can imagine, maybe the parents of those children were praying and said, Lord, send helpers. And God put the burden on your pastor and his wife and this church, and you have helped to answer the prayer of someone. Remember I taught you yesterday that one of the ways God answers prayer is to introduce men to your life. When you see men coming, the answers are coming. Because everybody's prayer request, really, really, uh, the answers are in the realm of the spirit, but they are translated for your profiting through the ministry of men. Are we together? A job, it takes a man. Promotion, it takes a man. More money, it takes a man. Transacting your value for profit, takes a man. Leadership, takes a man. The visa you are praying for, takes a man. Huh? Relocation, takes a man. Building a house, takes a man. A helper, takes a man. You are in debt, you want to come out, takes a man. Your brother is, in, is, is going to be charged with some problem and if God does not show mercy, he's going to jail. It takes a man. I want you to understand the value of men in our world and to pray that God will station the right people in your life. It can truly bring acceleration to your life. Are we learning now? Praise the name of the Lord. I have met people in my life that are almost um I, I don't it's like it's like nations in one person because of the level of their efficiency the kind of efficiency they bring to your life again i'm praying for you i don't know what god has told you is the next season of your life but the man who is the key that god will use to take you some of you in business some of you in destiny in career in ministry i pray for you may the right men show up in this season only speaking to believers i'm only speaking to receivers may the right men show up in your life Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. in the name of jesus christ in john chapter 5 when you read from verse 7 the man at bethesda we discussed it yesterday he said i have no man i have no man that was his challenge he said i have no man even though we know that is not accurate but at least he acknowledged the fact that if he had a man, one man would have been able to help him. I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I have no man. Prayer activates the ministry of angels. Prayer schedules human vessels sent by God with a mandate to help you, with a mandate to hold your hands, with a mandate to assist you. And you need this for destiny actualization because life is like a house. Every dimension is midwived by doors and gates and walls. The same way a house has walls and doors that midwife the kitchen. You partition your living room, your kitchen. When you are building it, it's one empty space. But when it is built, you call it a house because there are many rooms. Are we together? And you can lose the key to one room. Even though you are in the house, your stay will not be efficient. Maybe if you lose the key that opens up the kitchen, you are in trouble. Are we together now? You'll be hungry and you are in your house, but access to the kitchen is not given to you. This is how it is with many destinies. Unfortunately, the key in many regards can be men. I'm praying one last time that the key that opens up all the doors, all the doors, the living room of your destiny, the kitchen of your destiny, the library of your destiny, the men that have been sent by God as keys, may you find them and connect to them strategically. Amen. Your life is as easy as the men that stand with you. Your life is as easy, your life is as effective as the men 
that stand with you numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 these are the men the names of the men that shall stand with you if god gives you a mandate there are always men anointed by god to stand with you i have found some of them it's my prayer that i find all of them early enough in my life that when god gave me a mandate to the nations where are the men across the globe that he has put to stand with me when you find the men who stand with you ba your life will become so effective you will think you are living you are playing a cartoon with your destiny it will be too good to be true because the men who god has mandated to stand with you have no other assignment but to see you succeed the man at gate beautiful had men who carried him daily the first miracle was not paul i mean uh, peter and paul if he was not found at gate beautiful there would not even be a miracle the real warriors are not Peter and Paul. I mean, uh, 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 Peter and John. The ones who carried him daily. They took him there in the morning, took him back. Took him there in the morning for only God knows how long. When you find a man mandated by God to stand with you, they will never be weary. They know it's an assignment. Are we learning? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let me give you the final key. And I want you to be very sensitive. The final key responsible for every enviable destiny that we see is called the prophetic. You want to arise, you want to build, you need an encounter with the prophetic. Ezra 6 and verse 4. In this kingdom, we do not just build because of the abundance of wisdom alone. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 4. Verse 14. 6 and verse 14 my apologies ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 i like us to read it loud and clear when we see it in concert this is verse 4 thank you are you ready uh there are all kinds of names there i'll tell you where to stop i don't need the names i just need information ready one to go and the elders of the jews build it uh-huh through the prophesyings of haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel you can stop there the elders of the Jews built it and the reason why that project was fulfilled accomplished finished was that they prospered through the prophesyings of Zechariah the, the son of Edo Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo there is a spiritual dimension to success do you believe that there is there is a spiritual dimension to success the root of true Bible success is the realm of the spirit there are intellectual expressions to success there are relational expressions to success are we together there are value expressions to success but i'm telling you you will never succeed wholly if you ignore the prophetic the prophetic if and when um administered within the boundary of scripture works wonders i am a product of prophecy and within the few minutes a minute or two that we have i want to speak over your life and i want you to believe that things will shift by the mercies of god things will change by the mercies of god some of you have come past this mountain long enough the lord brought you for this conference so that you will shift shift to a new level Amen. do you believe that the prophetic is powerful though. it really is powerful it can program possibilities in your life schedule possibilities to happen in your life are we together i'm a product of prophecy i'm a product of the prophetic i have received prophetic blessings i have been pushed like a midwife assists a woman to give birth even if that woman herself is a nurse even if that woman herself is a consultant at the point of delivery her qualification will not even be a basis for her to give birth herself she will need a midwife are we together the prophetic is like a midwife connecting your yesterday and your today your today and your tomorrow and in the name of jesus i'm praying for you as we rise to pray rise up on your feet please we'll pray for a minute 
and then I just speak over your life. I want you to believe it. I want you to cry. Let there be a desperation from your heart. Father, I desire to arise and to build my life. I desire to arise and to build my destiny. I desire to arise and to move forward. That I live a life of struggle, attempting to exist, that I begin to live. Let life be added to my times. Let life be added to my years. Someone who is serious with God, begin to pray. 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 In the name of Jesus, cry for wisdom. Cry for wisdom. Cry for wisdom. Lord, grant me access to wisdom. Grant me access to wisdom. HCH, are you praying? Grant me access to wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I obtain grace. I obtain grace. The wisdom to excel. The wisdom to advance. The wisdom to increase. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Now obtain grace to pray. The kind of prayer that programs possibilities for you in the realm of the spirit. Prevailing prayer. Prayer that schedules and activates the ministry of angels for your profiting, for your advancement. Prayer that schedules and activates the ministry of men, the ministry of elders. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Help us in Abuja. Help us in Lagos. Help us in London. Help us in America. Help us in Canada. Help us in China, India, across Africa. Help us within Abuja. Financial help us. Career help us. Destiny help us. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to request that you bring your needs and your petitions before the Lord. I don't know how pastor would want us to do the prayers, but I'm going to give you a minute. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, but in everything. How many things? Concerning your land issue, concerning the court case, concerning your health. He says, but in everything with prayer by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says, let your request be made known. I'm not talking of your prayer request. You leave that. Pastor will direct how we'll do it. But my, I want to release my faith with you. The one thing you know that is currently impeding you from getting to the next level. Honestly, I'm releasing my faith with you and I want you to pray. Don't be silent. This is a prophetic atmosphere. Some of you, you just need an increase financially that God will bring helpers to bail you out because right now you are you are in a financial ICU. Some of you, it may be a health challenge. Whatever the issue is, please open your mouth and pray in the next one minute. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known, 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 let the housing issue be made known. Let the financial issue be made known. Let the marital issue be made known. Let the fertility issue be made known. Let the business challenge be made known. Let the health concern be made known. Let the spiritual problem be made known. Let the attacks coming around your life be made known. Let the attacks around your mind be made known. Let your expectations for tomorrow be made known. Take a minute and make it known by Whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, when ye pray, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Ela para dos sabrenta que verá com chambra catuz, lembrenta que verá que para dos que anda balanta frente de pele que parou. Em prazo cada pele tem branca tosiata, 
Let it be a new season, oh God. Let it be a new season, oh God. A new season in your life. A new season in your business. A new season in your home. Someone go ahead and pray. That cancer will not kill you. In the name of Jesus. That health concern will not kill you. You are a victor. You are an overcomer. It's time to arise. To arise from a life of death. To arise from a life of shame. Go ahead and pray. Your day is on Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen to me, believers. Learn to pray and learn to submit yourself. You have told people who did not have capacity to solve your problems, all your problems in life. And yet they did not solve it. I want you to trust the one who has the power. Are we together now? Yes to go to God in prayer and cry out your heart. I have learned the value of his presence because there I can open up my heart and share with him my concerns and receive strategies for the next season. If it is the place of prayer you go to, don't stop till you come out with answers. Don't stop till you come out with a solution. Father, what does it take to move this ministry to move my life, to move my family. You are a responsible man, but your hands are incapacitated. You've read every book about finances. You've done every brain work. There is a part of this equation that is a mystery. Only God will show you a strategy. You go to the place of prayer and you flog it out there and you hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk in it. It may be a foolish way, but it is the way of wisdom for you because God said it. God did not tell everybody to walk on water. Uh -uh. So don't think it's strange when he tells you to walk on water. If you walk on water on your own, it will be madness. But when he speaks, your answer is as you walk on water. Are we learning now? I can tell you various times in my life when by prayer, strategies were delivered. Some of them very frail, some of them very childlike. But upon receiving those strategies, executing them, it took my life, it took the ministry, it took my destiny to another level. The Bible says, now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph. You must learn to stay in the place of prayer. Don't take decisions until you flog it out with God in the place of prayer. But when he comes, you arise with confidence, knowing that he stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one. Is someone learning now? Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I'm going to speak over your life. Do I pray, sir? And then they do the prayers later on? Okay, so I'm going to be praying over your life. Why is the prophetic powerful? Because it is part of the victory tools that God has given the saints. I call them systems of advantage. When you lift your hands and you shout amen, it is not, it's not just a church thing. Amen means I agree that it should be so. Are we together now? And prophetic words are very powerful. To you, it just sounds like words moving through the air. But in the realm of the spirit, they are programmings. They don't die. They get into your tomorrow. And I told you yesterday, they schedule a triumphant entry for you. So if I pray, for instance, and I say, may your destiny help us find you. You just shout, Amen. How it will happen, you do not need to know. The Bible says, just as you do not know how bones are formed in her that is with child, nor the way of the wind. That is how you do not know the way of God. It will always be by a mystery you cannot explain. Are we together now? There is a part of this greatness equation that science cannot explain. It is the hand of God. Abraham who was about to lie that his wife was his sister, even though it was true in a way, but then he was lying so that Abimelech would not carry his wife away. And yet God worked it out. Are we together now? I hope you know that was how Abraham truly became wealthy. Abimelech the king lavished him with so much gift. And because Lot went with him, he got something to him. God is so determined to bless you 
he will cause a fish to swallow a coin that he will not do anything with it. That fish will remain hungry till you carry the coin from the mouth of the fish because God insists that you must rise. Most people don't believe in God. That's why they think he's scarce of options and ways to bless you. If you know the level of intelligence, the Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. You're not the first to be in Abuja. You're not the first to need a house, a car. You're not the first to want to rise. You're not the first to need deliverance from trouble. You come to God. The one who is an expert, he's done it two generations. He knows how to take away shame from people. He knows how to take away reproach. Ask Jabez. He says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. God for you. Ask Gideon. Ask Ruth. Ruth said, don't, don't. I mean, Naomi said, look, don't. Uh, my life is already, I'm, I'm down. Come on now. But when God came through for her, look at Ruth. Lost her husband, lost her children, lost everything. And then God restarted with her again with nobility and honor. She strolls to a field and there she meets a man called Boaz who will later become her husband. Why didn't she go with Oprah and go somewhere else? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It looks like you're coming to Abuja. It's, it's almost looking like a curse in your life because everything God told you is not yet happening. I'm praying for you in the name that is above all names that every word God spoke to you before you came into this city and even through your pastor this year in the name of Jesus, may it begin to happen speedily. Amen. May it come to pass speedily. Amen. I say it again. May it come to pass speedily. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of you here, I presume, are trusting God for jobs and trusting God for structural establishment. Let me pray for you. The Bible says, after you have suffered for a while, that the Lord himself establish you, are we together, and settle you. I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I'm standing in agreement with the angel over this house, and I decree and declare that which makes for your establishment structurally may my god bring it speedily Amen. 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 in the name of jesus Amen. i feel led to pray for people who are in any kind of financial trouble i want you to listen if you're in financial trouble, don't keep quiet. Oh. Read the Bible. Every time people got into financial trouble, it was not business that brought them out. It was the prophetic. Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was the prophetic. By this time tomorrow, it was the prophetic. Are we together now? Ah, she ran to the prophet and said, they're about to carry my children as collateral. My husband was a prophet and he was under your mentorship. Now he's gone. And he said, no, there is always something. Most people think that the prophet was just informing her that there was oil in her house. No, the prophet by prophecy programmed those who will buy the oil too. Are we together? And programmed the seed of multiplication within the oil. There were many things that happened beyond just saying, go to your room, lock the door. I'm praying for you. You got into any kind of financial issue or you're, right now you're having bills. I know there is a place for diligence, productivity, relationships, exchanging your value. But the emergency that is at hand now needs a prophetic intervention. When it is solved, you can follow the way of diligence and scale. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. May my God raise mysterious helpers and bail you out. Raise mysterious helpers and bail you out. Raise mysterious helpers and bail you out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And the Bible says they went to Lodeba and they brought a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Are we together now? The man was crippled. It incapacitated him. But... The, the Bible tells us that David called him and he sat down and he said, you will dine with me here for the rest of your life. You read your Bible, you will see that Ziba had 15 sons. And yet they were mandated to be the ones who plot the land for Mephibosheth. Let me tell you the truth. When favor comes, it does not endorse laziness nor lack of productivity. But there are times like you may have heard me say, Pastor, when your boat can be correct, your net can be correct. Your skill can be correct. 
You, the sea is where you should catch fish. All the variables intellectually are fine, but you will still not catch fish. Peter was a fisherman. Talk of skill and proficiency. Peter had a net, the right tools. Peter had a boat, the right tools. Peter was at sea. And he stayed there for long hours. All the factors were there, but there was no catch. There are times where everything, your business acumen is there. You went to school, everything is there. Are we together now? I wish I would tell you that every time you engage these things, because there are principles in the, what makes it not work is the world of men. If you were living in the world of robots, every principle will work accurately. But because you are living in the world of men, someone can look at you and say, because I fought with your father, even though you are supposed to be promoted, you will inherit a battle you have no business with. At that point, they will make the law of diligence not work again. Your problem at that point is not incompetence. is that somebody's hatred decides to tell on your advancement. At such point, you don't need skill again. You need Jesus. Jesus steps in in John 21 and says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter, not knowing who he was, he said, cast your net to the right side. And as soon as he swung the net by that prophetic word, notice he still used the net. You see, but it was not the same as him using without it. He spoke a prophetic word. You will still go on the job. You will still go on the business. Even the business you lost it yesterday. But the difference now is that a prophetic word will go with you. I decree and declare where you failed yesterday by the power that raised Christ from the dead. After this conference, go back and succeed. Amen. Go back and succeed. Amen. Go back and excel. Amen. Go back and succeed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My final prophetic word over you. The Bible says it was the Lord that advanced Moses. Listen, when you find people make constructive progress, you know what it means to advance? Your steps must be incremental. For you to make progress, if I am making progress, the next step must be ahead of the former one. If I move this way, I'm not making progress. It is motion, but not progress. You need beyond motion. You need progress. Progress means that the last step must be greater than the former one. The last step must be greater than the former one. Are we together? But if I just move from side to side, that is motion, is proof of life, not proof of progress. I pray for you. Some of you have been around activities, but they are not constructive. I decree and declare, go forward. Amen. Come on, shout amen. Go forward. Amen. Go forward in life. Amen. Go forward in destiny. Amen. Go forward in life. Amen. Go forward in destiny. Amen. I place grace upon your head. Go amen. forward. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen and amen and amen. Amen. Is it okay if I take an altar call, sir? In one minute. Please just spare me one minute. I know that pastor will come and lead us to pray over the request. But um, it would be a costly assumption that among everyone standing here that everyone's way is right with Jesus the Bible says the Lord adds daily I'm speaking to the many who are connecting online and then to those who are here before we get into uh, you know the prophetic prayer over the requests you are in this place and from all through the conference and even yesterday and this morning perhaps while you heard me speak the Holy Spirit began to prick you to tell you that there is profit when you take Jesus seriously. Number one, it may be that you've never truly made that decision. Number two, it may be that you've made that decision, but honestly, you cannot say you are in a functional relationship with Jesus as it stands now. This is a family and here is an opportunity to make it right. I do not want to make the assumption that everyone has got it right with Jesus. Wherever you are, I want to give one bold person I just need one sincere person who is an apostle. I will lie to myself. I want to win this war of destiny. Leave your seat and come stand before me. God bless you as you come. Let's honor them as they come. God bless you. Don't wait for anyone to be the first to come. You follow on and come. God bless you. Come on, HCH. Is this the best you can do? Let's honor them as they come. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brothers. Someone is still coming to Jesus. Someone is still coming to Jesus. 
someone is still coming to make it right with Jesus I still see my sister coming God bless you let's celebrate how she comes God bless you God bless you man God bless you sir hallelujah the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away I'm praying for those who are connecting online perhaps you're saying apostle you can't see me but I need to make it right with Jesus as I lead these precious ones in prayer, I want you to join them as you pray. Even if you are watching by way of a rebroadcast, it is never too late to make it right with Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, thank you for this noble decision. Let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today... I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for bringing this once. The Bible says that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of God's word, I declare your sins forgiven. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. You are empowered from hence to live the victorious Christian life. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace to the glory of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Someone direct me. What do they do? Okay, so I'd like you to follow. There's, there's a brother who will lead you. Let me request that you please cooperate with them. They will have a word with you just within a minute or so and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus name.